if you've been keeping up with the videos that we've done so far, uh, you should have pretty much the same code as I have here. Uh, in this video, we're actually going to take our fireball here, um, and we're going to get it to start moving around based off of the keystrokes uh, that we we press. Right now, if I hit play, this is what I have. I have we've been able to import the animated GIF, and we have these placeholders A and B of the targets. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is really understand what gets this GIF to move around. If I were to take this picture the, of the fireball, fireball and I were to translate it from one spot to the next spot. So if I, if I push it from A to B, really I'm pushing it in the, in the X axis. So I'm pushing it one direction. If I were to push it up, I would be pushing it into the Y axis. So when you're looking at an image on the screen, I'm running this looking at this image in in this screen here right here starts 0 0 so this is 0 X going that way and 0 Y going down this way positive so the further down I go in the Y the more positive I go and the further right I go on the X I go positive and then it would be opposite this way so we got to keep that in mind when we're doing when we're doing this. The second thing we want to keep in mind is that in order for something to move, it has to constantly be rendered, meaning it has to be updated all the time. So what we're looking for is actually something that's running all the time, like a timer or a dispatcher timer event in uh, WPF and VB. So what we want to go ahead and declare is a, a timer and it's just a dispatcher timer. Uh, we could call it game timer or whatever you want. Right now I'm just going to use the, some generic name. So I'm just going to say uh, dim uh, DT timer as dispatcher. Now when I do this I'm going to get an error because I did not import it. But it knows what a dispatcher timer is. So I can just go here and allow it to import it. I already knew what I needed to import, but I like to write it, write it here and let it import it for me, since that's one of the features of the um, the IDE anyway. So now I have this dispatcher timer, and now what I want to go ahead and do is uh, add an event handler in in uh, in my my constructor here. So I'm going to add an event handler for dispatcher timer that click so I'm gonna say add handler and then I'm gonna say DT timer dot click tick sorry not click tick I'll call this um, update player I should call it update game. You know, it's up to you, whichever, whatever you want to do. But uh, I'm just going to use this for now. I do this. Oh, I don't even have to do that. But I do this so that I can get this piece here. Hold on. Let's see. There we go. Then it'll make it for me. And here it is down here. I can get rid of that. I'm just going to drag this up here so, so I can see it a little bit better. And so you can see it a little bit better. So from here, this is where I'm going to add everything. Now, <clears throat> I just want to make sure that this is going to be working. But before I do that, I have to uh, go ahead and start my update, my, my, my timer here. So inside of the constructor, I'm going to go ahead and put my DT timer.start. So as you see here, we're creating a timer event, uh, an event handler, and we're saying this is the function or procedure that's going to be running as this happens. And then we start it. But there's one thing we're missing here. We're missing, we're missing parts of the timer that force the timer 
to be able there's there's actually a couple of things we're missing we're missing uh the part that starts the timer at a particular interval so let's say if it's one second two seconds five days or anything like that and the other thing we're missing is to be able to create a new handler so this happens a lot of times the reason why i did this because this happens a lot people do this part and they believe oh i created an event handler and they go down here and they um they created a timer then they create an event handler, then they create the start. But there's two major components missing here. Just because you s gave this DT timer, you know, um, a declaration of dispatcher timer, you haven't created one. I'm going to get an error because there's nothing to start. There was nothing created that needs to be started. See, so I'm going to get an error. So always remember, when you're creating things like this, dispatcher timer, you always have to go ahead and call the new timer event. So I have to say new timer okay so that's going to be very important to remember oops not new but new dispatcher timer there we go I could add the time in here but a lot of times what I like to do is I just like to do it separately just because it's more readable to me so I like to say DT timer uh, dot interval uh, and that's going to equals uh, new time span and in that time span is going to be uh, Actually, we don't want a new time span. We're just going to create, we're going to call the time span directly. Time span. And once we call that directly, we're going to go ahead and say from milliseconds. And we're going to give it one millisecond. So now what we're saying is we want to call this, we want to declare this as a dispatcher timer. We go ahead and we create the dispatcher timer. And then we go ahead and we set the intervals of the dispatcher timer with a time span. And that time span is going to be one millisecond. Once uh, we create an event handler, be able to handle every time this thing clicks. And then we go ahead and start the timer. So just to see my test working, I want to go ahead and put something in here into the console that right. Uh, and just to make sure that I'm getting what I believe I'm supposed to be getting. So I'm going to say um, <clears throat> current time and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, time, uh, some value here. I just put value there. and I'm going to say uh, So that's my test, and uh, this is going to run on. This is going to start on run. So, see, I'm getting a problem here because this static is not going to be used the same way here, because this is has to be a string, has to be converted to a string, in order for it to work inside the console. So that's that error. Let's see what else I get. There we go. Now it's running, and as you can see down here, it's constantly updating. Okay, so that's how we're going to start our timer. I get rid of this test. I don't need this test anymore. I know that's working. So the next thing we need to do is now start adding some functionality to um, our character inside of this timer loop. So I'm going to just say this is game loop. This game loop there. All right, so we'll move on from here. Now what I find in WPF is that there is really, uh, y you have to be able to set these characters before you're able to access the left, the right, you know, the X and Y axes. Because if you don't do that, what happens is you'll try to access them uh, through the X and Y and the left and right, and you'll get NAN, which is, you know, that's there's no... That's like saying null, basically. There's nothing there. So in order to accommodate this, what we need to first do is offset it just a little bit. And that's why I create the offset. Um, and the offset is just a vector, and it's just going to move the object. It's going to set the object in its current place um, just so that I can uh, maintain 
I, I can make sure that there is a value set to the object when the application starts. I don't know why it does this, but I've had trouble with it before, and basically that's why I go ahead and set the offset. So up at the top, I'm just going to hit a dim offset and as a vector. So it should be good, and then uh, I can put a note there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down here. Let's see, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and take my targets. Um, no, I'm going to call offset. And that's going to equals vis visual. Tree helper. Mm, a fireball. I'm also going to do the, the I'm going to do the same thing also because I'm going to need it later uh, for the others. So that's going to be fireball. That's going to be uh, target A. And oops, it's going to be target B. So that's just a little bit of housekeeping uh, because what happens is you're going to run into an error later and you're not going to know where it's coming from because uh, the system will not give you uh, as this timer is constantly going, it won't give you the proper coordinates without setting the offset for some reason. Maybe there's something uh, that I'm doing wrong, but so far I've been checking it out, and from the last time I checked, it wouldn't let it go through. So that's what I do to, to solve that issue there. The other thing I'm going to need is a value for the speed. So I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to set the speed. Dem speed as integer. It's going to be the speed of my object uh, at any given moment. Uh, after my calculations, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this speed. I'm going to go ahead and just set it to uh, speed equals 2. Oops, 2. Right. So let's go ahead and start making our inside of our loop. We're going to start. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and change the direction of our character as we. Uh, push the right button, the left and right button. Now, as you remember here, uh, we're inside of this game loop, but what we want to get is this, the values here out of the current key that we set before. And we made that, uh, you know, a, a global, that's a global um, parameter there that we're able to use inside of this class. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start a select case because that's the only thing I'm going to be looking at at this point. I'm going to select case and I'm going to call current oops, current key press right there. Oops, nope. Current key. There we go. Learn to type. Now I go ahead and do that and then uh, I'm going to say case is left got that and I'm gonna say case right and I'm gonna say I'm gonna type case up there we go now inside of case left what we're gonna do is we're gonna take we got to take the uh, rotation of the radian. We got to subtract it by itself, 
and then we're going to add 1.0 just in case there was a zero um, return on the radian. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is create a variable that will supply us with that information. So I'm going to dim uh, something called rotate radian, let's say, because uh, it. Hold on, let me just write this first. go and take this and I'm gonna set this to equals okay now this rotate radian is rotation you know from a unit circle but it's it's not degrees I mean because there's a difference between degrees rotating in degrees and and rotating in radian and there's an equation that that we're we're going to be using to be able to translate between degrees and radian because when we're using the functions here in Visual Basic, it needs the certain certain values in radian, and and it doesn't accept degrees, and and other things accept degrees, but doesn't really take radian. So we need a way to trans uh, translate between radian and degrees, but we also need a variable to be able to hold that for when we're doing our turn over here calculation, right? So the first thing uh, in order to be able to simply rotate this thing we're going to need something in Visual Basic that allows us to be able to translate things um, on the screen and it's not really you can't just go into the object and say okay rotate you have to have uh, a tool to be able to do that to be able to uh, attach it to your object and then be able to rotate it and basically what that is it's called it's called a rotate transform so what I'm going to do is add another variable uh, called rotate transform transform so that's my rotate transform one as a rotate transform there we go So what that means is instead of transforming the object, doing the calculations on the object itself, I'm going to be doing it on a rotate transform, then I'm going to hand that over to the object. So now what we're going to do inside of our loop here, we're going to go ahead and grab uh, two new locations. And we're going to say, call that static. And static just means this, this value will not change. So as I change it throughout this procedure, the, these values up here won't change with it. So I'm going to say new location y so we need our x and our y uh, as double and I'm gonna say new location x as double and now I want to be able to turn uh, and face the direction that I need so I'm gonna say new location based off of uh, the rotation so I'm gonna say new location plus equals speed this is how fast it's going to be going multiplied so this is we need um, sine plus the angle I mean multiplied by the assign the angle divided by a pi so we'll say rotate radian same variable we used up at the top and we'll multiply that by pi And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the next one, except we're not going to use um, sine. We're going to use cosine here because that's what's going to give us the y-axis. Uh, I'm sorry, the x-axis. Right here I have sine. Right here I'm going to do the x-axis. So x-axis will be cosine. And if you don't know anything about this, this is some of the elements of trigonometry and some math stuff. So uh, it, it may look weird in code, but if I were to show you as a math, as an equation, it would probably make more sense to you. But we're not really getting into that right now. So you can look it up yourself and be able to see how this works. Um, 
but basically this is how we're going to be doing this and to find the proper direction that this thing is facing so now uh, I'm going to go into my left and I'm going to take uh, the rotate radian and I'm going to take that and subtract it uh, from itself because remember the Y axis upward if I hit the left arrow key the Y axis is going upward is in the negative so I have to say the radian rotate radian negative oops minus equals minus equals radian uh, 1.0 so we should understand this statement right here that's just saying rotate radian subtract rotate radian okay equals 1 point, uh, 1 point, 1.1.1.0 so that's just like saying plus equals now I'm going to take my transform my rotate transform the one we made here and I'm gonna make that equals a new transform and I'm gonna feed it guess what my rotate radian right there now as this rotates okay first first let, let's uh let's test this out so I'm gonna say console dot right line And actually, you know what? I'm going to make this a little bit easier on me. I'm just going to go over here and make a helper. It says, um, make this a print. It's going to take a string. And then I'm going to go here, take this, so I don't have to keep writing that over and over again. There. Okay, so I just wanted to make this a little bit easier on myself. So I'm going to say print. Uh, let me try. Mm, I'll try the rotate radian. I'll try printing the rotate radian. And I'm going to make that to a string because we remember what happened last time. And let's try running that. Let's see what happens. So I'm hitting the right mouse button. There we go. So it's going up and it's going up. But you notice what's happening. If you look down here, it's going past 360 degrees eventually. If I look at this, all the way down here is at 600 and something degrees. And I can't use these degrees because it's just going to go on and on and on. It's not going to stop okay? because there's an infinite number. So what I need to do is I need to put some parameters here so I'm going to go ahead and close that print I need to say that once you hit you know you hit 360 I need you to start back at zero so I'm going to say if rotate radian um, if it is less than 360 degrees uh, less than negative 360 sorry because we've gone in the opposite direction um, yeah rotate radian equals so let's see if that works okay so I'm about to hit my left oh not right there we go Oh, let's see what happens here. I think, oh, no, 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 no. Get back in there. There we go. One up here, actually. Just print that one there. So now what should happen is that um, when it gets to negative uh, 360, uh, then it'll go back to zero. So let's go ahead and see what happens there so when I hit left it runs and let's see what happens when it gets to negative 360 there we have it it went back to zero 
uh, once I stop it I can even go back to my output and I can see it here I'm gonna scroll down oh, let me go back right here so it got to negative 360 then it went to zero then it started again on the negatives that's why uh, that's why all this works go all the way back down that way okay so we got one going I can go ahead and get rid of this print I'm just gonna copy that out cut it out and basically we're doing the exact same thing with the right so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this I'm gonna paste this and instead of subtracting I'm gonna say plus and instead of point 0.1 I can leave that point 0.1 and I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna flip this around this way because we're saying positive now if it's greater than this is fine too so I'll just leave that like that zero is zero it doesn't really matter uh, so now let's see this one work so I have that there now I'm going to go ahead and print this out oops I am getting lazier and lazier. I don't even feel like typing this part. Uh, all right, so let's see that work out. I'm going to hit run. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit my stay up. Oh, I, I got it. OK. That's my left. Yeah. All right. It's going, going, going. 360. There it is. It hit 360 and it stopped. That's good. And if you want to check even further, you can go ahead and go to your output and go ahead and scroll up. This was 360 right here. Got to 360, got to one, zero, and then went back to one. Okay. Perfect. So let's quickly uh, clean some of this up really fast. I'm going to go ahead and take this and put it on outside of this at the bottom of this if statement. And I'm going to go here and put this because it's not really being calculated there so much. It's only I only need the calculation towards the end. And this pretty much should work the same. Um, yeah. And each one of these, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, print. I know this is going a little bit long, but I think it's going to help you guys out. Um, radiant. So I'm doing another test here. And I want to do a test on both of them. So I want that at the bottom of the test, just so I can see it work. And I'm going to put that one there, and then I'll run it. So my left. Let's see it get to 360. And it's going to go back to zero. Good. And I'm going to go right. I, I push to right. Now it's in positive. When that gets to 360, it should go back to zero. Good. So I know this one went a little bit longer, but uh, we got our rotations going on. This was probably one of the hardest things. We got our rotation, and we have our location of the rotation at every point of the of the rotation. Now you could have used pat, uh, math. Dot pi, or you could have used 57.3, which would do exactly the same thing. So if you don't have uh, access to math pi, you could use 57.3. Uh, in the next video, we're just going to continue with this and move forward. I just I know this went a little bit long, so I'll stop this video here, and we're going to start back up in the next video.